preacher if he ain't called you. Because when he call you, you got to make some changes. If you're a man, you got to make changes. If you're a woman, you got to make changes. He call whoever he want to call. Oh God, please. I ain't going to mess with nothing now because I feel my pastoral spirit coming on. When he call you into the ministry, change the way you walk, change the way you talk, change the way you dress, change where you go, change what you do. You can't do what you used to do. You can't, you ain't in charge of your life no more. If you've been skin tight, that don't work no more. in introducing this the young young lady that, that we're going to bring the word on today. I told her a week or two ago, and uh, I think, I forget how long it was, but uh, would you rest on your feet and receive Minister Shemika Deaconess Minister Shemika Ford and she comes in her own way. Say amen and she comes.
for your goodness, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. Thank you for being who you are in our lives. Thank you for being a God that never fails us, God. Thank you for being a God that sits high and looks low upon all your people. God, you are a God that reigns on the just and the unjust. For you are a holy and righteous God. And we praise you this morning. We lift our voice and we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for every way you've made. Thank you for every door you've opened. Thank you, God, for loving us. Now, God, send your word on today. We need your word. We need your spirit to pierce the very core of our heart, to change our lives for the better, to show us where we fall short, and to help us to love you the way we're supposed to love you. So God, we just say thank you. We ask that you have your way in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decrease so that you can increase. You be in control of every word I say, everything that I do in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. You may be saved. I give honor to God, who is the head of my life, to my pastor. I thank him for this opportunity. I give honor to my husband. I appreciate you, Nick Ford. You are a blessing to me. If you all wouldn't mind, please get your Bibles out and turn to Daniel, the third chapter. And we're going to read the 17th and 18th verse. Daniel 3, 17 and 18. If you got it, say amen. And the word of God reads, if it be so. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And if he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image without which thou hast, cast, hast set up. Would everyone please repeat after me? What if? What if? He doesn't do it. We all know that God is an all-powerful, ever-present, miracle-working, soul-saving, sanctifying, loving, merciful, and kind Father. We sing songs like Keep On Proving Yourself, and that has become our church's anthem, only because God always proves himself. He's always making a way in every situation of our life. So we sing songs that say he knows how much we can bear. He'll never let me down. He answers every prayer. I've heard people say God has given me everything I have prayed for. He's never let me down. But the question I propose to you today is what would you do if God let you down? What if he didn't rescue you? What if he seemingly left you all by yourself? How would you respond? Would you be angry? Would you doubt his very existence? Would you curse his name? People are fickle and they change with every emotional wind that blows through their mind. One minute they're with you, the next they're your worst enemy. One minute they love you, the next minute they're talking about you behind your back. And if you're up, they rock with you. But the moment you're down, all you hear is crickets. As long as you're giving them something or they can benefit from your life, they always are in your face. But the moment you don't do something for them or you don't agree with what they say, you're not their true friend anymore. How many of us know someone like that? As long as you agree with them and things go their way, they're fine. But let the flip happen. And they're nasty and selfish, self-serving, hateful. And they have an evil nature. Isn't that the most terrible feeling when you've been there for someone and you, you've helped them and then all of a sudden when one thing don't go their way, they turn their back on you? How many of you know how that feels? Today? I want you to do me a favor. 
I want you to close your eyes and think about how that relationship, how that person made you feel and the betrayal and the disappointment that you had. I want you to put yourself right back in that spot. Now keep your eyes closed and repeat after me. Why would you hurt me like that? As long as I gave you what you needed, we were fine. As long as I bended to your every desire, we were cool. I thought you loved me for me. But now I see it wasn't me. It was what I could do for you. Now open your eyes. Now I'm going to read a letter to you that your best friend wrote you. All y'all best friends. Your best friend says, I know I'm the great I am. And I created everything. But I still have feelings. And you know I do because I created you and you were made in my image. You hurt me. And I don't understand why you would do me like that. I've given you everything you needed. I provided your protection. I provided forgiveness, grace, mercy. Comfort, joy, peace, and most importantly, I gave you my love. The kind of love that caused me to let my only son, who I also love, die for you. You promised me that you would serve me. I heard you when you said yes to my will. I heard you when you said it's for me you live and for me you die. You said you were nothing without me. You even said I was your everything. So I blessed you with things. I answered prayers because I believed you and because I'm just like that. But the moment I didn't give you what you wanted, you became cold. I looked for you at our secret prayer, prayer time and you weren't there. I thought surely you would talk to me this morning, but all I felt was coldness and anger. So I sent an angel to minister to you and you rejected it. I sent a preacher to remind you how much I love you, but you paid him no mind. Did you really mean what you said? Do you really love me? Or do you only love what I can do for you? How did you respond to God when something didn't go your way? When he let that loved one die? When he didn't heal that sickness? When you didn't get that job, when your child went to jail, when your marriage dissolved, the truth of the matter is, some of us get angry, we get cold, and we get distant. I've been there myself and I thought, how could he allow this to happen? I thought you loved me. You just gonna sit back and watch my heart be ripped out of my chest? I want you all to think about Mary and Martha and Lazarus. They weren't just any people. They were actually friends of Jesus. They were people that were in tight relationship with him. He knew them intimately. He knew their doubts, their fears, their flaws, their secrets. And seemingly, Jesus wasn't there at a time they needed him the most. He let their loved one die. He was able to say one word and stop it from happening, but he chose to ignore them. They felt the sting of betrayal and the grief of losing someone that they loved. Not knowing that Jesus had a master plan for it all. Like us, they're only able to see a piece of the picture. They're not able to see the whole masterpiece. We forget that God sees an infinite number of possibilities, outcomes, and effects at the same time. So whatever he allows is the best case scenario, not only for your life, but for the countless other lives that you'll touch. All right. I quote this scripture all the time, and I'm going to quote it again. It's Isaiah 55 and 8. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my way, your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's a sad fact that we think Daddy? we have it all figured out. We Daddy? think we have all the answers and we Daddy? play puppet master with God. We say, God, move this over here and put that right there and turn that around and then take that away. How dare we act like we're in control, 
Like we're the ones making ways for ourselves. And God is only in the background to support us with whatever we want to do. Or whenever we're up against something that we can't handle. I don't care how smart you are. You'll never be smarter than God. Job and his arrogance. And I know a lot of you probably don't think that he was arrogant, but he was. Decide that he figured God out and God had to check him. In Job 38, the contemporary English version reads, For out of a storm the Lord said to Job, Why do you talk so much when you know so little? Now get ready to face me. Can you answer the questions I ask? How did I lay the foundation for the earth? Were you there? Doubtless. You know, you just you decided, did you decide its length and its width? What supports the foundation? Who placed the cornerstone while morning stars sang and angels rejoiced? When the ocean was born, I set the boundaries and I wrapped it in blankets of thick of the thickest fog. Then I built a wall around it, locked the gate, and said, your powerful waves stop here. They can't go no further. Did you ever tell the sun to rise? And did it obey? Did it take hold of the earth and shake out the wicked like the dust of a rug? Wow. Early dawn outlines the hills like stitches of clothing or sketches on clay. But its light is too much for those who are evil. And their power is broken. Job, have you ever walked on the ocean floor? Have you ever seen the gate to the world of the dead? And how large is the earth? Tell me if you know. Where is the home of light? And where does darkness live? Can you lead them home? I'm certain you must be able to since you were already born when I created everything. Woo, that hurt my feelings and I he wasn't even talking to me. <laughs> Did God put him in check or what? <laughs> in other words, God was saying, shut up and sit down somewhere and let me be God. While you're already trying to figure it out, I've worked it out and some other stuff, and I did that over there too. When are we going to remember who God is for real and serve him no matter what he doesn't do for us? We must serve him when we're up and when we're down. When things go our way, and when they don't, in pain and in happiness, in sickness and in health, in our heartbreak and in our wholeness. And why is it? Because it's our reasonable service. Mm -hmm. He's done so much for us that he never, if he never does anything else, he's done enough. Yes. He is God and God all by himself. He's an all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent God. Yes. He is I am. The God that is always with you. He is Yahweh, the self-existent one. He is Adonai, the Lord over all. He is God, our shepherd. He is God, our healer. He is God, our provider. He is God, our banner. He is God, our peace. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the God of recompense. He is Elohim, God, the creator, powerful and mighty. He is El Elyon, the most high God. He is a mighty God. He's an everlasting God. He's the strong one who sees. He's the God of knowledge. He's the ancient of days. He's the God of my salvation. He is God. Who are we to tell God what he should do with our lives? The lives he gave us. There, we don't know anything without him. We don't know anything without him. If you think you know something, it's only because God put it there. He doesn't need anyone's help. And he doesn't need you to just live in your little box. Your little box where all you see is you. Our purpose is much bigger. It's, it's, it's about more than just us. We don't see the countless number of people that are behind us that he has set up for us to help. And if we don't do our job, there's going to be countless others that fall behind. And you don't want that blood on your hands. So you got to let that anger go. And you have to remember that if God brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. It may not work out the way you want it to. It may not work out the 
the way you expect it to. But you got to believe in your heart that it's going to work out for your good. I learned a valuable lesson. When my son got cancer, I said, when the doctor told me he had cancer, I was like, surely he doesn't. I serve God and I teach him all about God. That's a lie. I'm not claiming that. That's a lie. And when the doctor told me he had cancer, I said, wait a minute, Jesus. With an attitude. I said, I know you did not. I told God, I know you did not. I didn't give you, I gave you my whole entire life. Not just a little bit of it. My entire life. And you telling me that my baby has cancer? I was hot about it. And I had to remember who I was talking to, first of all. <laughs> so I had to repent, first of all. And I said, ooh, Lord, I'm sorry, Jesus, forgive me. I'm I got besides myself. You know how when you're a kid and you talk to your parent real crazy and then you come to yourself and you say, oh, Jesus, I can't talk to mama like that. <laughs> well, the one thing that God showed me was even if it don't work out. Even if he didn't heal him. Even if he didn't make a way out of nowhere. That he was yet able to do it. And I had to come to myself and I had to say, God, I say all the time that I trust you. I say all the time that, you know, you, you are the way maker. You're the healer. You're this and you're that. But I didn't really believe it. I'm just be honest. I was saved for all that time and telling people going through, oh, you can make it the Lord. Until it was me. Until it was me. And I couldn't even have my woe is me moment because God checked me. And he said, uh, no. And I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> but you have to remember that no matter what happens, if it works out in your favor or if it doesn't work out in your favor, in the end, it still works out in your favor. That don't make no sense, huh? If it don't work out in your favor, or it does work out in your favor, it's going to work out in your favor. And that's because our Bible tells us that all things work together for the good of them who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. So if they leave you, bye, that was for my good. If, if your friends turn their back on you, I'm going to pray for you. It was for my good. If, if your child is sick and they don't get healed, you say, God, you gave them to me. They belong to you. So it's going to work out for my good. So my words of encouragement for you is, if it doesn't work out, if he doesn't do what you want him to do, serve him anyway. Love him anyway. When you made the commitment, you didn't make it with stipulations that said, if things work out the way I want it to work out, I'm going to serve you. If you do exactly like I said, then I'm going to live for you. When you lifted those hands and you said, yes, Lord, you said yes to everything. You said, you said yes, Lord, if, if you don't heal them. If you're healing, you said, yes, Lord, if it feels good, if it doesn't feel good. You said, yes, Lord, if it's comfortable, if it doesn't feel comfortable. You said, yes. So trust him. Trust him. He is God. He knows everything that you don't know. So you have to trust him in the midst of it. What would you do if he didn't give it to you? That's it. We, 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 we not bowing down, King. If he don't do the God that I serve is always able. I know that. So I trust him rather than what you can do for me. I trust him to bring me out. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for that portion of scripture. Amen. I visited a lot. Because
Because God has brought me from a mighty long way. I've been in the valleys and I've been on the mountain. I've been in between. But he never left me. Thank you, Jesus. Good God of mine. separate me from the Lord of God. The enemy is out to separate you. He's out to cause you to throw in the time. But all God wants you to do is just keep marking time. Mark time. Because he's going to bring you out one way or other. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And like Seth said, if he don't do it, it's still for my good. Said nothing happening to me that won't turn out for my good. No matter how bad it may seem. Amen. Anyone desire prayer? Before we close out today. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, these that have came down to this altar, God, I pray you touch them right now. You lay hands on them right now in the name of Jesus. God, you know what they came up here for. You know what they stand in need of. One by one and name by name, God. Touch them from the crown of their heads down to the soles of their feet. God, you know all about it. You know all about it. You see the tears. You see the frustration at night. God, you see them worrying. God, you see them frustrated. You see the anger. But God, I know you are a way maker. I know you to be a miracle worker. I know you to be the provider. I know you to be a healer. Spirit of the living God. Have your way right now. Breathe on them, God. I feel your presence. I feel your presence. Let the weight of your glory fall on them now. In the name of Jesus. Let the weight of your glory fall on them now. In the name of Jesus. God, do what you want to do. Work it out how you're going to work it out. In the name of Jesus. God, we know you get final say. You get the last word. Whatever it may be, whatever the problem may be, God, you know it by name. We call it out in the name of Jesus. 
And we come to serve the devil. Notice that every assignment, every contract has been canceled and destroyed and sent back to the pits of hell. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And the blood of Jesus is against you. Come on, Zion, open your mouth and help me pray. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus, the blood, 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 the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We come against you now, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We come against every witch, every warlock that's walking with you. We come against you right now. We cancel your plans right now in the name of Jesus. We call out every frustrated spirit, every suicidal spirit, every spirit under the sound of my voice that's not like God. Come out of here right now in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place. Move right now, right now, now, now. Come out of here. Come out of here right now. In the name of Jesus, take your hands off of God's people right now. Take your hands off of God's people right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Spirit of the living God, have your way right now. I wish, I wish, 
I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Come on, I don't have to lay hands. I don't have to prophesy to you. We're in the perfect atmosphere right now to get whatever you need from God. Come on, this is where your maturity gets checked. Come on, come on, whatever you need. I know it looks bad. I know you said I've been here for a long time. I know it looks like it ain't going to change, but God is working it out. He's just asking you to worship me. Worship me. Haven't I been good to you? Didn't I wake you up this morning? Didn't I provide for you? Haven't I brought you out in the past? Haven't I proven myself over and over and over? All I want is a worship. Tell them how awesome he is. Your worship, he got out of the ocean. Tell them how awesome he is. When you think about what could have happened to you, when you think about what God has protected you from, the old saints used to say he protected me from danger seen and unseen. I dare you to think about the unseen stuff that God protected you from. Even in the snowstorm, the, 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 the devil had desire to take you out. But God blocked that semi from hitting your car. He blocked that car from coming over into your lane. He blocked that child from coming to your child's school and shooting them up. God not awesome? Is he not awesome? He sees the tears. He sees the hurt. He sees the pain. He knows what you've been going through. But has he, has he not done enough? I know this is stretching some of y'all. Spiritual maturity is stretching you. It's stretching you. Some of y'all feel uncomfortable because you don't want to lose your cool point. Because you don't want to really let go and let God have his way. But I'm telling you, if you do, God will move on your behalf. They, 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 they ask the question, is there anything too hard for God? Can I ask y'all that? Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Then open up your mouth and give God praise right now. Open up your mouth and do it. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Open your mouth and give God glory. Get up, come on, worship him. Get 